You're listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. All hit radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is the X Zone. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And you can listen to the X Zone Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. Eastern until midnight on the X Zone Broadcast Network. And starting on March the 21st, Monday, March the 21st, the Exxon will be on the Mutual Broadcast Network from 3 p.m. Pacific until 7 p.m. Pacific. Now, you can always listen to the Exxon. I mean always, 24-7, 365, by going to www.exxonradiotv.com. Or you can listen to our podcasts at www.exxonpodcast.com. My guest this hour is Tom Lombrazo. He is an author, artist, photographer, and planner. How many of you have looked up in the sky and seen those beautiful white clouds on a beautiful day with the, with the back blue sky and have seen images? Well, Tom has two books out. They're beautiful books. One is entitled... Divine Images, and the other is entitled Faces of the Universe, Sacred Images. And I must tell you, the photography in these books are fascinating. But what Tom does is you look at these pictures and you see angels, beautiful angels, and they're clouds. Beckoning the question, is there a connection between the angels we see in the clouds and the angels we have in our lives. Well, Tom had a near-death car experience in February 20, uh, 2001 on Highway 65, which he calls his magical moment. 30 seconds before the accident, a voice in his car declared, slow to 35. Tom immediately slowed from 60 miles an hour to 35 miles per hour. Then another car pulled out in front of him and caused the accident. Tom lived, Exonation, because he listened to the voice. The voice was that of Archangel Michael, which came to him in a vision in 2005, and later in a cloud, as seen in one of the photos that, that uh, Tom took in Sedona, Arizona in 2008. Now, since that accident, Tom has gone through a huge personal transformation. He has been guided to paint, to write books, to travel internationally, and to continue his spiritual adventure. Journey to the Clouds, Faces of the Universe, Sacred Images, and Simply Angelic, Divine Images are his first three books of over 200 cloud photos, each explaining about important messages given to all of us from the clouds. His book helps others to awaken at this time in our planet's evolution. Joining me now is Tom Lombrazo, and Tom, welcome to the X-Zone. Thanks so much, Rob. Um, you're so kind to invite me to your show tonight. You know, Tom, um, I've, I've looked at your books that you were kind enough to send us. And I remember as a child growing up in, on the south shore of Montreal, looking at these beautiful clouds and seeing images myself. Uh, as a child, I, I remember seeing images of, of bunny rabbits, um, uh, of horses. Uh, and, and, you know, after looking at your books here in Hamilton, Ontario, uh, a number of years later, I must say, I too can see clouds that look like angels. 
Is it the perception of the person looking at the clouds who has an open mind and an open heart that sees the difference from bunny rabbits to angels? Well, uh, Rob, I think it's about um, awakening. Once you start seeing them, um, you see more because your mind is open to it. Mm -hmm. You're looking for it. And they're there. And I think the more you look, the more you see, the more that might come to you. Because clearly, I don't think this is just a coincidence. Um, I believe the clouds have consciousness of some kind. They're not just water vapor. I mean, some are, clearly. Sure. But, um, um, what's happened to me is that they just come to me. It didn't used to be that way, but they now come to me. And they come to me in different forms. They come to me in the form of angels. They come to me in the form of people that have passed. Uh, such as uh, a young woman that I knew who died at 19, or even my cat who died three days earlier. And Tom, I hate to do this. I've got to take a break. We'll be right back. Exo okay. Nation, check out this website, www.whenangelstouch.com. And uh, Tom and I will be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Exonation Tom Lombrazo is our special guest, www.whenangelstouch.com. Now, Tom is in daily contact with Archangel Michael in his meditations and in messages he brings. He is also in contact with his dad, who passed away in 2011, via musical messages he sends several days a week. Tom has been led around the world to visit sites of his past lives, ancient Rome, Naples, Italy, Avignon, France, Das France, uh, Sicily, and Australia, just to name a few. He has been led to follow ley lines through Ireland, England, France, Italy, and Australia, especially the Archangel Michael line, ley line. Tom has experienced as a photographer and photographed various life forms on the planet, such as wood sprites uh, and men, what is it, Menihune? Yes. Okay. And, of course, he has been contacted by angels and humans from uh, delivering an important message to him. Once again, his website is whenangelstouch.com. And, uh, Tom, let's talk a little bit more about the awakening. When people start looking at your books, and the next thing you know, you're looking up in the sky, and you're instead of seeing the bunny rabbits, you're seeing angels. What's going on? Well... The universal thing that's happened when I give people a book, they go through it, mm -hmm. and they tell me later, the next day or whatever, hey, I have to look up now. <laughs> and then that's the part of the awakening you know, for them. It is They're searching for, just like you mentioned, they're searching for to look to see mm -hmm. uh, what they can see. Is it anything like that I've captured in the, in the books? And the books themselves um, are uh, indication that there's something much more stronger uh, in terms of um, showing that there is something going on in the clouds that is not just water vapor. It is truly a, a, uh, a parade of images that are so incredible. Tom, if you don't mind, could you take us back to that, that day in February of 2001 when you're driving on Highway 65 and that moment that you call your magical moment when you heard the voice of an archangel? Yes. Um, first of all, I'd like to say I was a pretty normal, practical person before that. Um, and I, I lived on my five senses, you know, see, seeing, hearing, and so forth. I didn't really believe in angels. I mean, I thought they were more mythical and well, all of a sudden, I'm driving 60 miles an hour on this expressway, and this loud voice, male voice, in the passenger seat of my Jeep calls out. And it wasn't in my mind. It was a real voice. And it said, slow to 35. Well, I looked around for a brief second, and there's, nothing, there's nobody in the, mm -hmm. in the Jeep. So I thought, well, that sounds important, so I'm going to slow down to 35. I've, I've met a lot of people, and they do not follow this guidance. And therefore, something not so good happens to them, you know, a bad accident, whatever. Well, 
as soon as I did slow down, another car passed me that had three young men in there, and they, for no reason, they pulled right in front of me, and I had no way to stop. And fortunately, it was at 35. Right. The California Highway, California Highway Patrolman that came 10 minutes later, after both our cars were demolished, said, Sir, after I told him the story, he said, Sir, at 60, you would be dead, no question about it. I see it all the time. Wow. Well, that shook me up. At that point, I said, what happened? I heard this thing. Mm -hmm. i got to find out. So I spent years literally talking to everybody I could. Um, And only until 2005, um, both my wife, Caroline, and I were sleeping at 1.30 in the morning, and our bed is shaking violently up and down about a foot, up Mm -hmm. and down, up and down. Lights are going on in our, our bedroom, including one not plugged in. Boom. What is it? Burglars? You know, so so we get, I got out of the bed after it stopped. It took about 20 seconds. And I went around the house. Everything was locked. And, of course, we had quite a time trying to settle down after that. Well, as soon as I closed my eyes, immediately I had my first vision. I don't know if you remember the old TVs where they had a bright white spot in the center when oh, you turned yeah. it on. Yeah, no. That's what my first vision was. It had that bright light, and then it just opened completely up, and here is this vision of this angel standing with huge wings, more than I've ever seen in a book, and um, and in color, and so defined, better than HD TV. Well, and then he's showing me he's on a horse with a shield and a sword, and that was it. I was Clearly, I knew at that point this was an angel being shown to me, but I didn't know who. Mm-hmm. The next day, I had this compulsion to go to our local bookstore, which was at that time Borders Books. I went to the metaphysical section, and I pulled out the first book I could see that had an angel writing on it. Right. And I pulled by random to the somewhere in the center, and here automatically was this complete illustration of what I had seen of the angel on the horse with a sword. It was Archangel Michael. I mean, he was forcing me to learn <laughs> who that was I saw. So that was really the how I identified it for sure. I have to ask you, what was it like when, when you realized what you were seeing and you started putting all the little pieces of the puzzle together from the start of the the uh, the crash the near crash of February the twi- uh, February two thousand one to that very time when you're looking at this book after having this this vision and then bang you know yeah well um, I was a person that needed proof you know there's a lot of us mm-hmm. people that are going through transition I, I know they're on your show and the thing is. I need. I wasn't going to talk about too much of this to anybody unless I had proof. And that came in 2008 when a cloud over our head in uh, Sedona, Arizona, mm-hmm. came to show this angel. And it was him again showing me. And I had my camera, took the pictures. And that's what you see in the book. And um, there's my proof. So I felt vindicated in a way that I could go and talk to anybody. I don't care. I can just show them the picture and say, okay, you tell me what this is if it's not what I'm telling you. this." So, um, and then subsequently I've had hundreds of thousands of pictures of all kinds of entities in the sky and the clouds, among other things. And um, it's been quite a journey learning about things that um, we're not taught, Mm -hmm. frankly. Why, 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 we just don't believe. why don't you think we're taught about these things? Well, um, part of it is, um, you know, a lot of people say they've seen an angel in the sky. Well, mm-hmm. then you tell me this, and then I can't really necessarily believe because I don't see it. So uh, many people I've talked to, they don't open up until I show them the book or I tell them my story. Right. And then they say, you know, I've had something like that happen to me. So it, it relieves the, st- <laughs> the yeah. stress, I guess you would say. And, um, and so um, part of it is that, you know, we're afraid to talk about it because people think we're crazy. Well, frankly, it's okay with me. 
and I've lost some friends about it. That's okay. I know what I have, and I know I have all this proof, mm -hmm. and as you can see in the books, and much more. So um, I think that's part of it. Part of it maybe is, you know, we're not taught, period, to believe in these things. There's other dogmas in our society we're supposed to believe in and not this. Tom, I was wondering if you could take our listeners back to May of 2008. You're in Sedona, Arizona. What happened there? Well, um, it was our first time there, and frankly, uh, we went on a tour, and then later in the day, my wife was uh, really interested in labyrinths. So mm -hmm. we found this labyrinth at a St. Um, Andrew's Episcopal Church on the far end of Sedona, and it was a big one. Uh, modeled after the one in Chartres, France. Well, we started walking it, and it took us about 20 minutes. And as we're walking, about noon that day, it was partly cloudy, but then this mass of clouds just swirled. And I looked, and I looked, and it's going to form something. So I ran to get my camera. Mm -hmm. By the time I got it, um, this image, uh, of, I had a couple of pictures of this angel fo uh, coming forward, and I took those. There was also another picture of a uh, Native American in the sky. Um, so a lot was happening up there. Unfortunately, I had my camera and captured it. And that's where you, that was, uh, that was Archangel Michael again? Yes, that was, the, that was the photographic proof I needed. Um, the, the other things you could tell people and they would mm -hmm. say, well, okay, that was nice. But now... You know, I've got a photograph of it. Now what do you say? <laughs> Seeing is believing. Like you, you had yes. already had the proof yourself. You had the voice. You had the, the, uh, the vision. Yes. You found the, the vision in a book. Like you, your life has been led to this point where you've got the photographic proof that you can then present to other people. And what have people said about that picture, Tom? Um, pretty universally, they are... And all of it, um, they basically say, I see something there, uh, or it's remarkable. You know, I kind of tell them what I think it is, so they have to make their own judgment. But clearly, it's very impressive. It certainly is. It's a great story. Um, and like you said, seeing is believing in exonation. The pictures are phenomenal. Tom's website is www.whenangelstouch.com. That's www.whenangelstouch.com. Tom, we have to take a news break at the bottom of the hour now. But when we come back, I would like you to share with our listeners uh, when you went to Peru in 2007 and what happened there. Is that okay? Okay. All right. Yes, yeah, that's cool. Exxon Nation, our guest this hour is Tom Lombrazo. Once again, www.whenangelstouch.com. Now, uh, Tom and I will be back on the other side of this break, Exxon Nation. But like we've been telling you for the entire week, starting on Monday, March the 21st, 3 p.m. until 7 p.m. Pacific, we are going to be on the Mutual Broadcast Network and their affiliated stations. You'll still be able to listen to the Exxon Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. Eastern until midnight right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. And you can listen to us 724-365 at www.exxonradiotv.com. Once again, my guest this hour is Tom Lombrazo. His website, whenangelstouch.com. Tom and I will be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Welcome back, X Zone Nation. My favorite topic angels. I believe in angels. 
I believe I have seen angels. I believe that I have been witness to their work. I tell a story, Tom, that when my younger brother was very young, we nearly lost him after he was given some baby food from a can that had gone bad and he suffered from tomain poisoning. We were all at my grandmother's house. My mom and dad had driven my brother to the hospital. And I was about seven or eight at the time. And my grandmother had called all the family together because it didn't look very good for my brother. And I remember looking over into the corner of the kitchen with everybody sitting down at the table and uh, seeing this, this man with a big smile on his face, love emanating from him. No wings, mind you. My, uh, my grandmother looked at me and I was smiling back at this, this man and she asked me what I was smiling about. I said, well, that man over there said everything was going to be okay. And we both looked and, well, needless to say, that man was no longer there. However, we got a phone call from my mom in the hospital saying that my brother had made a positive turn and that he was going to be okay. So I believe in angels, Tom. They're there for sure. There's no Mm -hmm. question about it. I believe that one of the biggest misunderstandings that we mortals have who have never had the experience of of seeing their angels or being helped by an angel is because they just haven't asked. Could be. Could be. Yeah. We tend not to uh tend not to want to believe that we can communicate that way. So tell me, Tom, um let's go back to Peru two thousand and seven. What happened there? Well, just before that, probably six months before that, I was doing a lot of running, and I would um, I would start to see things in sidewalks and rocks, which you can see in my other book. We had some examples of those. I mean, living things and essentially in rocks or sidewalks and um, or images, and I would take pictures of those. Well, when we went to Peru in mm-hmm. November 2007, um, uh, we were on our way on the train from Cusco to Machu Picchu, and it's like a four-hour ride, and the, the train car had those windows on the top, so you could see out right. on the top as well as the top. Well, I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden I see this cloud that looks like a huge bird. I mean, it was so defined. I got my camera, and I took two or three pictures of it. It was really hard because it was, the train was moving so fast. Mm-hmm. And... and um, and uh, and there was another cloud next to it, really close, and it looked like a cat. And and then later in our adventure in Peru, we're at Lake Titicaca, in a small village, and here's this huge serpent-looking cloud over this building. So I have those three pictures. Well, as we explored the Incas there, um, we learned that the three gods of the Incas are the condor, the mm-hmm. bird, the puma, which is the cat, and the serpent, the snake. And um, that's what they believed in. We got to see them, and we got to take pictures of them. It was amazing. And that opened my eyes huge as to clouds. That was before the Michael Cloud in Sedona. I mean, I couldn't stop looking at clouds after that. Since the, uh, the first time you had your, your vision with Michael... Has he communicated you uh, with you again in person? Have you had any more visions? I've had hundreds of visions of all sorts, mm-hmm. and some of them just don't make sense to me, but they're there. Um, Michael communicates in different ways to me. Um, I've had <laughs> I've had uh, voicemails that appear to be from angels. I can't say it's from him. Mm-hmm. I've had um, I've had I was in bed in 2013. Six o'clock in the morning, I it was like somebody, you know, shook me up to wake me. I woke up real quick, and here is this message in my mind, like it was typed in my mind. Send this book, which was the Simply Angelic Divine Images book. Send this book to all places named Saint Michael. That was it. And I thought about it. He's right. I should send it to those places because 
that's who believes. There would be no doubt. Yeah. So I immediately, that day, I started sending three or four books across the world for free um, to churches and cathedrals and schools that were named St. Michael. And it's been fun. <laughs> Besides angels, have you had any encounters with uh, other, uh, other species, or have you ever had a run-in with evil, or has it just been good with angels? Well, I, this is a big point with me. You know, a lot of us go through transition of one sort or another mm-hmm. in our lives. Uh, this one I've been going through is um, it combines all the good and all the evil. And it's like, it almost feels like an initiation, to be honest with you. Um, but I've both my wife and I have had spirits attached to us that are not good. Um, and uh, uh, we've had people that we've found that can determine this. Um, because they can scan our bodies. Right. Um, but, for example, we had we had 14 spirits on each of us at one point, and they were a combination of, of ancestral spirits, like uh, Native American spirits, mm-hmm. uh, other spirits that we couldn't identify, and the jinn, which is the D-J-I-N-N, which is the really tough one. It's very powerful and potentially evil. And... Um, and for example, the jinn at one point on um, this last book, simply angelic. When I had just finished with my editor and it was ready to print, publish, uh, my wife and I were left the meeting and we're driving out of town. And in my my in my SUV, the windows are closed, and my gl- sunglasses fly off my head, break in midair like someone snapped them, and then the car had a message. <laughs> on the um, um, odometer area, which was, when you read it, the manual said, if you think, if you see this, your wheels are spinning. It was a message. In fact, I could, I could feel a hand, like, hit my ear to get those glasses off. Oh, my gosh. There have been attempts, there have been attempts like that all through our, uh, this experience from different entities. I have to go to a certain person, actually out of Sedona, but remotely he can remove any any, any entities that come. For example, another one was we, a couple of black cats came to our house a year ago uh, in different times, and one of them was really injured. It was very fluffy. I took some pictures of it, and I saw this very evil-looking little thing, image on its back end. Well, I sent it to the guy I talked about here in Sedona. Right. He said, yeah, it's a bad guy. They know you'll love this cat. You'll bring it in, and that's how they're going to get into your house. So things like that happen. But you've got to be aware. You've got you to know um, you can beat it um, with proper techniques. How do you and your wife protect yourselves from these negative entities now? Um, we, uh, we have a kind of a mantra we say every morning together, mm-hmm. holding hands, for one thing. We might wear um, necklaces that would repel them. But I think the biggest thing that I've been taught from a lot of others, that you have to have yourself in a state of love. Um, your, your mind thinks of love. You, uh, you love your wife, and your husband, mm-hmm. love, love your family, whatever it is. But you have to be in a state of love, um, not putting yourself into negative situations or with negative people. Um, that's what we've learned, and it, and it tends to work. But in today's society, Tom, we're surrounded by negativity. How do we protect ourselves? You know, like You and your wife, fortunately, have been able to understand how to, how to ward off evil. Obviously, you're, you're guarded by angels. But for listeners who are listening now whether it's in the United Kingdom or whether it's uh, throughout Europe on Radio X or, or anywhere else where we have our, our listeners, how do they protect themselves with all this other negativity around them? We're bombarded with negative news, 724-365. Boy, you got that right. Uh, we're bombarded with the yeah. news. We're bombarded with friends, even family members yeah. that create a lot of negativity, work work partners, whatever, you name it. Um, so uh, I think the first thing is to recognize what negativity is. And 
and ho hopefully you can feel it or you can see it. Um, when somebody is just creating an argument, you know, unnecessarily, all, all these things. Well, once you recognize it, mm -hmm. you know, and some people can feel this more than others, that they can feel their energy being drawn away. They might feel tired after encountering a bad, actually a bad place yep. or, a, or a bad person. And uh, we've experienced that many times. So um, identifying it, and then you've got to kind of extract yourself from it. You know, uh, we've, we've uh, removed many people from our lives, many places we used to go to from our lives right. because they're not good. And that's really helped a lot. I know it's hard, mm -hmm. but once you recognize this, you have to make it, you know, I, there is good and evil everywhere. <laughs> you know, it's good. there's good and evil on this planet. I think there's good and evil in many other dimensions. Right. There was actually good, good and evil in heaven, right? So yes, right. Um, we have to make a choice. Uh, what kind of life we want to lead. And we've made the choice. We don't want that around us. We'll do everything we can to remove it. And um, it's really worked for us. And it's hard because we're not brought up to do that. Uh, we're also forced into a lot of situations. If you're at work and you have a work partner that's terrible to you, well, too, that's, that's too bad. Deal with. But yeah. you have to find a way. How do you find the... the the social media and the accessibility to to what I consider to be a lot of negativity on the internet when it comes to the the youth of today. Are we endangering our youth by not keeping a closer eye on the internet and what they're doing with it? Well, it's like anything else. I mean, as, if you have children and as parents you need to guide them properly and you need to obviously take a strong interest. I think a lot of us in this society are drawn away mm -hmm. because we have work to do. Many of us have two jobs yeah. or might be going to school. Whatever it is, it draws us away. It's a hard thing. Um, but you're right. I do think that um, kids that on their own or young adults, uh, they have time to investigate life. And you can't blame them for investigating yeah. it. But they have to be taught, I believe, about good and evil a long time earlier, and um, and perhaps they have a better chance that way. I mean, the Internet and the emails and all that are all good things, but just like anything else, yep. it can be abused. I understand in 2011 you actually had an experience with angels in human forms. Can you share that with us? Oh, it was remarkable, I have to say. Um, it started out with... Both my parents died in 2011. They were 92 and 83. They had been together 64 years. God well, we had been taking care of them. Yeah, we'd been taking care of them for three years, and it was tough. Well, we were so exhausted that um, I had discussed with my wife. We, after my mom died in September 2011, mm -hmm. I said, we need, to, we need to go away. We need to recharge somehow. Sure. So I suggested we go to th this place I had read about. It was a new hotel in the Navajo lands um, in northern Arizona called The View. And, it, you know, where all those uh, movies and the westerns had the mesas and the spires, and that's where that was. And it was just beautiful. And I thought a week there would be great. Well, I discussed it with her, and she said, you know, let's wait until next year because I think we're too late in the year. And I said, well, I'm really disappointed but I'll, I'll do what you want. Mm -hmm. Well, we happened then to go to a baseball game in San Francisco later in September, and we had met a friend uh, there over the years in, in San Francisco who channels. He channels all the time. You go and see him, and he's automatically channeling. Well, when we saw him, I was remarking, uh, telling him about this story, and he, he looks up and he starts channeling. He said, you know, Tom, the elders are telling you, you have to go with this now. And, and my wife Carolyn says, Okay, we'll go. So we got home, and she made the reservations. And we ended up going the, I think it was the second week in November, November 7th to the 11th. So can you imagine 11, 11, 11 in Sedona, Arizona, in wow. that area? <laughs> it was magical. Anyway, we go to the the place, the, the view on mm -hmm. the Navajo land. And the last night on 1110, we're sitting next to, we had a small table for dinner, and another table next to us was, was small, too. Two older ladies sit in this uh, in this um, this table, and one was 93 or 92. They're both from Philadelphia, and we have we're so close. We're having discussions, 
and um, we said goodbye when we were done. Mm-hmm. Well, the next day, my wife and I checked out, and we decided we'll go down to Sedona, which was a four-hour drive. We get there, and we had a friend there to hook up with, and we spent the afternoon with her, and we decided it was so crowded there, we decided to go to the outskirts of Sedona and, and um, you know, have dinner there. Well, uh, we did, and we found a place called Pizzazz Pizza. We go in there, it's already crowded. We got the next to last table. Well, um, we're sitting down, and in come a line of people, including those two ladies. Hmm. They had no idea we were there. It's four hours' drive. They said they were going back to Philadelphia. All these stories. Well, I run up to them, and I hug them. And, um, and the older lady, she's 92 or 3, she looks up at me, and she says, Tom, when I get to Philadelphia, I'm going to, I'm going to send you a packet. You've got to, you'll, you'll like this stuff. Anyway, then she says, but you've got to promise me something. I said, what? She says, you've got to promise. Be sure. Are you, are you going to promise? I said, yes. She said, you have to look up Julian of Norwich, J-U-L-I-N of Norwich, N-O-R-W-I-C-H. Julian of Norwich of England. Well, we said goodbye. I, mm-hmm. Later that night on the iPad, I look up Julian of Norwich. It's this lady who was about 30 uh, during the 1300s when the plague was rampaging all of Europe. All around her people were dying, and she gets it. She lived in a little tiny room of the Norwich Church. Well, uh, she actually lives. She said she had uh, visitations from Jesus 16, 16 times. She was healed, and she lived into her 70s. She right. wrote these several books about um, divine love and how creation should be honored. All right, Tom, we've got to take a break, so please, we're going to have a bit of a cliffhanger here. Exo Nation, Tom Lombrazo is our special guest, www.whenangelstouch.com. And when we come back, Tom has a special, a very special offer for you, the members of the Exo Nation. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. All right, Exo Nation, Tom Lombrazo is our special guest, www.whenangelstouch.com. First of all, Tom, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. I love your books. I love talking about angels because as I told you on air and I've told my listeners this before, when it comes to angels, I believe. Um, we, had a, I, I, we had to take a break and I did a bit of a cliffhanger. So if you could finish the story off and then tell our listeners about the very special offer that you have for them, yes. I'd appreciate that. Well, to finish the story is that those two ladies from Philadelphia, weren't they from Philadelphia, they were angels in human form to give me a message. There was no possible way that they knew our, we were in Sedona. There was no possible way they knew that we um, we were going to go to Pizzazz Pizza. Mm-hmm. Because we've never been there. We've never, uh, there's no way that they knew what time we were going to be there. Uh, but there they were. And it wasn't just they showed up. They had to tell me something I had to do. And I did it. And it was probably the most important message that has come in today. That is, we all have to embrace divine love. This planet we live on, this mm-hmm. universe, it's divine. It's created by God, whatever way you believe in it. And... Um, we should honor it. We should love it. Anyway, that's the story. And then uh, I wanted to I wanted to say to the your listeners that um, I'd like to offer at least 25 books of Simply Angelic Divine Images to them. All they have to do is email me at tom at whenangelstouch.com and just say that um, they would like the book, but they have to include their mailing address or I can't mail it. So um, a lot of people uh, send me their email address. No, 
got to be the physical mailing sure. address. So if they do that, I will send them a book for free. Fascinating, Tom. Uh, Tom, what is your final message for the members of the worldwide nation of Exxon listeners when it comes to angels? Well, angels are real. Um, the purpose that they're here for is to guide us. But again, it is to for us to evolve to a state of love, mm-hmm. um, and particularly divine love. And that's the lesson. And when, you, when people ask, what's the meaning of life? The meaning of life is love. I would have never said this 15 years ago. It, it's so simple, but it's also you have to work at it and you have to believe in it. The message has been given us uh, over, the, over the decades, you know. And uh, like John Lennon said, all you need is love. Tom, thank you ever so much for joining us. It's been a great pleasure speaking to you again. I love the work that you do. I love your photography. You, my friend, are a very talented and gifted man, and thank you for sharing the messages with us from the angels tonight here in the Exxon. Thanks, Rob. Exxon Nation, Tom has been our guest this hour, Tom Lombrazo. His website is www.whenangelstouch.com. And if you'd like to get a copy of Tom's book for the first 25 co- uh, l- uh, listeners who contact Tom, his email address is tom at whenangelstouch.com. I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Angels, I believe because I have seen, I have witnessed, I have the proof. I'm Rob McConnell. I'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Mm-hmm. 